Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Many thanks to our very own Justin, aka Chicken Perm, because he reviewed this game, Dragon's Dawn of New Riders, on Nintendo Switch. As always, a big thank you to our Patreons and everyone else who leaves a comment down below. DreamWorks Dragons Dawn of New Riders for the Nintendo Switch is an adventure spin-off game related to the How to Train Your Dragons movie series. The game is developed by Climax Studios and published by Outright Games. Despite the next movie in the series being set to be released in February of 2019, this game is not related to that film, which is a little bit odd to me. Dawn of New Riders is set to release worldwide February the 1st, except in the US it's going to receive the game on the 15th of February instead. Will Dragon's Dawn of New Riders leave you craving to see the next How to Train Your Dragon? Or will the game cause Scribble's amnesia to spread to the gamers and it be long forgotten? Let's find out. If you're a fan of the series, then you'll recognise the presence of main characters like Hiccup, Astrid, Toothless the Dragon, and many others that assist you along the way. Yes, that's right, they just assist you because you take control of a young man who's lost his memory and ends up just going by the name Scribble until he can find out his real identity and how he ended up on Hiccup's island of Havenhome. You're also going to meet and play as Patch, a strange mixed breed of Chimera and Dragon, unwittingly dubbed a Chimeragon. Yeah. Together the two set off to unravel who they are and why or how the duo has ended up in this strange land. Without giving away too much, story is good and compelling until the very end, where things take a bit of a turn south. Overall story scores 12 out of 20. Gameplay is where this one shines most. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons and the 2D Zelda games came to mind while playing. You get to alternate between playing a scribble and patch at the press of a button at any time in order to solve puzzles and in battle. While you play as one, the other will follow you or fight on their own alongside you. Whether it is traversing dungeons, in battle or just roaming the land, there are benefits to alternating between the two. Both have their own life bars, but when using a potion, both get healed from it. Astrid from the movie series will appear in areas all over the world for you to restock on potions and buffs in exchange for the collectibles you've gained from gathering plants. Hiccup's father, Stoic the Vast, will upgrade your armor and weapons in exchange for your ore collectibles, but he's only located in the camp on Havenhome. Scribble can yield an axe, hammer or sword when fighting. The hammer will also move large blocks to solve puzzles. Patch starts small, with only the power of ice to use in fights to freeze enemies and freeze water to walk over. The Chimeragon will rapidly age and evolve twice throughout the journey, leading to his ability to shoot lightning bolts that stun enemies and interact with dragon statues for puzzle solving. <laughs> You will encounter fights with a few varied style vikings, small to large dragons and several other bosses as well as the main villain, Air, who is trying to control the dragons. There are treasure chests to find in each area that contain large amounts of supplies for upgrades, new equipment and heart containers to increase your total health. By freeing caged dragons around the world, you're able to unlock different powerful dragon strikes to aid you while in battle. The only other feature of gameplay is that you can ride on your dragon to travel from island to island, and man did they miss out on making this aspect as interesting as it could be. You just fly to whatever island and land. It really seemed like they left something out of the flying part of the game. Now while Justin felt that the flying element of the game was pointless, I personally quite enjoyed it, it just needed some collectibles or something to do as you flew around. I enjoyed the animation and the sense of freedom that you got as you point the camera towards the ground and speed up and you can swoop around and do barrel rolls. Yes, there isn't a great deal of purpose to it, but I did enjoy the sense of freedom. Overall for me, the real issue with gameplay was the fact that it was so repetitive. It literally became switch, run, switch, run, switch, which for me just isn't enough to keep me interested. For the most part, the game controls well enough. You move the character with the left stick and you have a series of attacks and abilities that you can do by spamming pretty much the Y button. I found the controls to be okay, but there were some irritations. 
For example, when you roll by pressing a single button, if you hold it down then you can sprint. While this seems like a nice idea, in practice when you just want to run, you want a single button to do that, not have to roll into a wall and then have to begin trying to maneuver to run the way you want to go. I found it quite annoying. When in combat you lock onto certain enemies, but I also found combat to be a little clunky. For example, you can block certain attacks but not others, and generally rolling away from your enemies is sometimes a necessity as you can't block them anymore. Overall, the game just felt a little bit clunky, and for me, gameplay and controls receive 13 out of 20. In terms of audio, it seems to me that they've saved a bit of money here. Until I did some research on how to train your dragon film series, I had no idea how many quality actors and comedians are the voices of the characters. Gerard Butler, American Ferreira, Craig Ferguson, Jonah Hill and TJ Miller, there are some actors there that I really enjoy. How unfortunate then for Dragon's Dawn of New Riders that none of them audibly speak. All the dialogue is in text and each character just generically exclaims out of place at the start of their text bubble and that's about it. <laughs> the music is good and it's in keeping with the films, but I did expect more for something related to such a big movie series. The only two music pieces that really stood out to me were the ones that played when flying on your Chimeragon, travelling across islands and the large ice island on your way to the second dungeon. In regards to sound effects, the dragons were on point and the bigger they got, the more threatening they sounded. Other than these, nothing was particularly bad or great, it was just average. Run of the mill sound effects. The backstory is told via scrolls that you read. Even if they would have merely added voiceovers for these, it would have been a huge improvement to the overall audio package. Audio scores 13 out of 20. There is a definite resemblance to How to Train Your Dragon's animation here. The visuals are much better while flying, but it's too bad there's not much reason to ever be flying over to another island. There are about three or four different environments you navigate on foot, where there are god rays shining and rainbows reflected in the water of a waterfall, and I like those. There are three dungeons with only minor differing visual themes though. Let's face it, we're here for the dragons, and they did not disappoint. Nearly all of them have a distinctive design, but there could have been more types and varieties. The boss dragons were the showstoppers for me, each one larger than the previous. It's just a shame there were only three, and that really is the trend for the entire game. There's just not enough of the things that were enjoyable, and a little bit too much of the things that weren't. Overall, visuals score 14 out of 20. DreamWorks Dragons Dawn of New Riders runs for $39.99 in the US and an equally steep £36 here in the UK. I played this game to its entirety, nearly 100% completed it, just missed out on a few supply treasure chests in some areas. It took me around 5-7 to seven hours at most. Now honestly, I thought I was about halfway through the game when all of a sudden the game ended and the credits began to roll. In the end, Patch's part of the plot will be revealed but Scribble's main reason to set out on this quest from the beginning is never even resolved without trying to reveal any spoilers. The ending of the game had me scratching my head completely bewildered. Was only the first half of the game released? Why release a spin-off game completely unrelated to the mainline movie coming out in the same month? Is there a plan for DLC? If so, will it be free because for the asking price of this game, it better well be. I do not have any answers to those questions, but I can tell you that I was extremely disappointed with how this game just abruptly and suddenly ended without any resolution. The game length and conclusion really left a sour taste in my mouth, which is a real shame because I was unexpectedly invested in it. The only way I could really recommend Dragons is if How to Train Your Dragon is an absolute favourite film series, or you have younger children that you'd really like to introduce to this genre of game and play together in hopes that they might get on to some of the larger Zeldas. Value though scores 8 out of 20. It's just too expensive here. Hiccup's Dragon Sanctuary has been destroyed. No Scribbler and his ultimate hybrid dragon patch must take flight. While Dragons wasn't a particularly bad game, there were just so many missed opportunities for both Justin and myself. It scores a final switch-up score of 60%. 
thanks so much as always for watching the channel, for being subscribed, for leaving comments down below and for all things Switch all the time, keep your Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!